It's good to see you today. Hope you're doing well. We are going to be thinking about someone we were introduced to in yesterday's study. Did you notice we were introduced to the prophet Jeremiah? Jeremiah, in chapter 1, he's a young, per- he's, he's young fellow. We're not, not going to be looking in chapter 1, though. We're going to be looking in chapter 7, actually. But today's hymn is the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. What I was thinking about in today's um, brief meditation is that we love to tell the story, but we have to tell the whole story, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And so let's look at our passage now. We're in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord. All you of Judah who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place or walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place. Let me back up. Let's actually look at chapter 1, because chapter 1 speaks about when Jeremiah is, uh, when he begins to prophesy. Verse 2, came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. That Passover that he kept was in the eighteenth year. Okay, so so you see a little bit of when this was. You might also think about how this would have been instrumental in invigorating Josiah as well. Okay, back to our passage. Back to our passage in chapter 7. And so the Lord, through Jeremiah, says, this, you, you need to amend your ways. That's what they needed to do. And part of that amendment was they needed to be thinking about how they had been treating each other, how they had been oppressing the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, all of those things. They needed to thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. Our relationship with each other, our worship of God can be absolutely nullified if our relationship with others is not what it should be. Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, You bring your gift to the altar. If you, if you remember that your brother has something against you, you leave your gift there, and you go and you be reconciled to your brother. Then you come and you worship. James speaks about pure and undefiled religion, visiting widows and orphans. Our relationship with each other is extremely, extremely important. If we don't, if our relationship with others is not what it should be, if we are not working towards that, if we are not amending our ways concerning those relationships, then we're not listening to the Lord, frankly. This is a part of the story of Jesus, that we have to tell the whole story. And the Lord had a good bit to say about loving others. All right, let's read on now. Verse 9. 
Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? And that's, that's the second thing. You're going to bow down to the Baals and then come to this house and think that that's acceptable. No, our God is a jealous, our God is a jealous God. Jeremiah, did you notice in that early, the, the first part of this chapter, he's standing in the gates, standing in the gate of the Lord's house, proclaim these things to those who enter at the gates. And he says, do not say, do not trust in these lying words, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Don't trust in those things. Don't trust in, nope. And it's, don't think just because you have the house of the Lord that that can't change, because that's about to change. And don't trust in, don't, don't trust in that. You need to trust in the Lord, and you need to follow the Lord, the Lord's ways. And, you know, when time's gone by, thinking of judges, and we'll talk more about why I'm thinking of judges here in a second, when everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And there was no king in Israel. And the idea is they weren't following the Lord. They needed to follow the Lord. They needed to let the Lord reign in their lives. Pardon me, I have something in my eye. They needed to let the Lord, they needed to follow the Lord's lead. So they needed to think about how they were treating each other. And they needed to think about worshiping the Lord, or serving other gods. And people do the same thing today. We can do the same thing today. We can serve the political gods. We can serve the sports gods. We can serve the monetary gods. We can serve all the modern day idols. The family god. We can serve ourselves and then come to the house of the Lord and think everything is okay because after all, we're in the house of the Lord, aren't we? The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord are these. We can think just like down there at verse 10 now for our next point, and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. We can think, oh, we can continue to sin that grace may abound. We've, we've been delivered from bondage, so we can do whatever we want. That is not how this works. And just to emphasize how that is not how this works, the Lord says, Verse 11, Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. And that this is why I wanted to read this passage. I hope you're familiar with where verse 11 is quoted in the New Testament, because it's when the Lord cleanses the temple. He cleanses the temple. It's recorded early in the Lord's ministry in John's Gospel. It's recorded later in the Lord's ministry in the Synoptics. Looks like he perhaps did it twice. Do not make my father's house a den of thieves, but now, but go now to my place, place which is in Shiloh, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. That's why... I wanted to talk about judges. Why I wanted, why I mentioned judges? Well, what had happened in Shiloh? Well, that's where Eli and Eli's sons were, and they go out to do battle against some enemies, and they get whooped. And they they just kind of wonder, well, I wonder why we got whooped. And they have a big idea. Let's just let's go get the Ark of the Covenant, bring the Ark of the Covenant out. And then that, and then everything will be okay. Even though they had been sinning horribly against each other, against the Lord, but they thought, oh, the temple of the Lord. Even though there was no temple, but they had the ark, didn't they? They had the tabernacle. And there it was in Shiloh. And they thought, oh well, we'll just go get the ark. We'll go get the ark as we battle against the Philistines and the Philistines, and they they bring the ark. And they start making all sorts of ruckus, and they're shouting and hooping and hollering, and the Philistines say, oh no, we're doomed. And then they say, the Philistines say to themselves, we are going to fight like men. And they fight, and the Ark of the, the, Ark of the Covenant is taken away. 
Israel loses the Ark of the Covenant. So when the Lord says, in Jeremiah's time, in Josiah's time, you go find out what happened in Shiloh. All you folks who are saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, guess what? Destruction is coming, and the temple's about to be destroyed. Amend your ways. Think about your relationship with others. Think about your relationship with God, and think about whether or not you're letting sin continue in your own lives. That's what the Lord is saying through Jeremiah. And then all of a sudden you have the quotation in the New Testament when the Lord cleanses the temple. Elsewhere, nearby actually in John's account, elsewhere when the Lord says, he's speaking, he says, the Lord, he says destroy this temple and I, will and I will build it in three days. Rebuild in three or however you phrase it. I'm hashing it up, pardon me. And they say, let me go find that passage. Let's read it together. This is going to be in John, the end of John chapter 2, I believe. Jesus cleanses the temple. They say, what sign do you show to us? And Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Pardon me, I should have quoted that a whole lot better than I did. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. And, when, and will you raise it up in three days? You have Solomon's temple. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Back up. You have the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. It's the Ark of the Covenant. Go get the Ark of the Covenant. It's gone. Philistines take it. Josiah's time. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. They're going to be gone and the temple's going to be destroyed. After 70 years, they come back. Temple's going to be rebuilt. In, in the intertestamental time, it's almost destroyed again. There's a lot of, and you start having the building that, that happens once again, spoken about there in verse 20. 46 years. That building is not going to be finished, if I remember correctly, until the mid-60s A.D. Guess what happens in 70 A.D.? It's destroyed again. Quit trusting in stuff and follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. How do you treat others? How do we treat the Lord? Do we let sin continue in our lives? We love to tell the story of Jesus, but we have to tell the whole story. We have to tell the whole story. Otherwise, we might miss out on something. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.